Hello, everybody. It's me, Ross, and welcome to another edition of the League One Lowdown, where I speak to fans, podcasters, and journalists from each League One club to get their thoughts for the coming season. Today, I'm joined by Ollie from the Sulop Cast, covering all things Shrewsbury Town. I'm sorry if I butchered that, Ollie, but welcome to the show. Uh, give us an introduction on you as a Shrewsbury fan, and I'm probably even saying Shrewsbury wrong as well. That's you one are. of those things I always get wrong. Yeah. Uh, I'll let you yeah, take the floor, you, though. Yeah, you're doing the BBC pronunciation of Shrewsbury. Um, which is yeah, no one would, no one says Shrew. It's always Shrewsbury. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm Ollie Warner, um, co-presenter of the Shrewsbury Town podcast, Saladcast. Uh, me and Glenn have been doing it um, for six. This is our sixth season now. Um, so yeah, we're quite fortunate in some ways. There's, we're the only podcast. <laughs> we're kind of the really the only fan media, uh, which is quite fun. But yeah, we've been doing going for a while now, and yeah, we get got a lot of listeners, and we're. Yeah, kind of cemented ourselves, uh, I think, in the Shooter Town fan base. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, and also, this is fun as well. You know, we sign a player from Birmingham or Bristol City or, I don't know, Manchester City or Liverpool. So many good podcasters and people out there. So, yeah, if we sign a player from it, which I'm sure will be in your, in, your in, uh, in your inbox asking for your insights. So, yeah, it's a good, good community out there. Definitely, my friend. And uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the, the shrews. I'll try not to say the full name because <laughs> I know I'll butcher again. But um, last year, um, of course, Steve Cottrell, 17th last year. He, of course, he unfortunately had COVID and was very much in a hospital for a very long time. But you guys were able to make yourself staying in League One. Let's talk about the transfer window as a whole. Uh, the big standout for me, uh, I'll let you take the floor on the other names, but Matthew Pennington, of course, got connections with town. He was on loan before. But he signed on a free permanently after a loan spell with you guys. Um, is he the, the marquee signing this summer or what, what's the other ones? Yeah, I wouldn't say necessarily the marquee. Um, I'd say he's probably up there with probably the most uh, the player. He's actually probably got the player with the most potential maybe we've signed in this, in this transfer window. Um, I'm sure he's had a, a significant wage reduction. Um, there was rumours he was on like 15, 20k a week, Everton. Um, and he'll probably be on a lot less than that, <laughs> maybe 10% of that at Shrewsbury. Um, and he's a good signing. I know that he really enjoyed living in Shrewsbury. It's a really nice, if you've ever been to Shrewsbury, it's a very nice market town and very kind of, yeah, it's a very nice place to live. Um, and he, he settled in Shrewsbury. And I think for, for him, he's an interesting sign. And sign for Shrewsbury, gets a load of games under his belt um, and then try and, yeah, maybe go back to championship. He's, for me, he's definitely a above high level League One um, player and maybe good enough to get back in the championship again. So he's a really good sign. I really like him. Um, he's even scored a few goals for us as well, actually, from set pieces and even did an assist as well as an overlapping centre-back. So that's quite cool. Um, other signings for me, which I think are good, is we have a really good record of signing loan goalkeepers. Um, so we had Dean Henderson on loan, who I'm sure you're familiar with. And he was absolutely amazing. Um, unbelievable goalkeeper, unbelievable character. And then we had um, Sarsvic on, on loan um, last season. Before then, we had um, O'Leary from Bristol City. So we've got a good record of getting loan goalkeepers, but it's actually nice for us to get Morrissey. So he got promoted with Coventry out of League One, so that's good. Um, and then we also signed a couple of other good players. So for me, Elliot Bennett from the Championship is a good right wing back, right winger. So he brings some maturity and experience to the squad. Um, and then in terms of strikers, we haven't had an out and out striker since James Collins. Um, in League Two, we always really funny. Actually, we said, you know, James Collins isn't good enough to score goals in League One because he didn't score for us, and now he's playing for Cardiff in the Championship. So it shows your players can improve, and you never know, Pennington could be back in the Championship. Who knows? You know, players do improve. Um, so he's good. Brian Bowman, striker from Exeter City, not a you know, a, he's like a one in three man in terms of goals. Um, but he brings us. A, a, he looks really good in preseason. He looks quite physical. He looks like he's a bit of a, a cross between a, a you know a target man and a runner, which is really good as well. Um, and really in police, I won't go through the other names because we signed quite a few other names. When we had Sam Ricketts, he changed the club a lot, and that's in some ways it's a it's a, it's a positive and a negative. Our chairman and our MD give the manager the freedom to kind of you know invest. So for example. Um, you know, we invest into Sam Ricketts more in GPS stuff or things like that. You know, we're given the free the, the freedom to spend money as we can't they fee, see fit. Now, one of the negatives is that we did have a head of recruitment who actually is, went to Doncaster and now is at Villa. So he was obviously really good at his job. But now actually we've got um, Keith Burt, who's head of recruitment. And he was head of recruitment last summer at Cambridge, who did pretty well last season. And obviously Steve Cottrell's really experienced uh, as a manager as well. So for us... All the signings, so last summer as well, sorry, last January, we got a better from Man City. He's probably the best left back, left wing back in the division. 
and I will argue that with anyone. The won't be he probably is the best left back um in in the division. Um with Peterborough after him and there's rumors other clubs are still after him. So I'm really, really confident the players that we're signing are really solid um and fit part of a strategy where last summer we were signing players like Mark Pugh and um Charlie Daniels who are like above 35 and it seemed like we were desperate but this time he feels really controlled um, I'm really happy with the players we signed so far we probably need to sign maybe five more players um a couple of loans in there maybe maybe six players in total we're including loan players so like a lot of clubs um we have, everyone's have to be quite patient and of course, as, as a recording, we've got just under a month to go until um, the transfer window closes. So I'm sure when this goes out, there's going to be many other signings, ins and outs at the club. Um, Steve Cottrell, this is going to be his first full season in charge. Um, he's now able to bring in players he wants, and building his squad going into this season. Um, what are you expecting this year for for the Shrews, you know, want an improvement position from the 17th. But it, as we said off air, I said in previous episodes, the league one is going to be so open. It's going to be so competitive. What's your, your thinking right now? When The countdown is on for the big kickoff as well as we're recording. So what do you reckon? Yeah, so I think for us, a bit of progress, I think is fair, um, fair expectation. And we did our preview podcast yesterday and Shrewsbury Town fans, you know, there was a lot of 10th, there was a lot of 12th, a lot of 14th. Some people are going, or going more south of that. So I think somewhere around the halfway mark is probably Shrewsbury Town's fans' expectations. Um, I think sometimes we are kind of club that people doing predictions will just put in the lower place because, you know, we've got, we want, you know, we're a fairly small fan base. You know, we've got six, 7,000 fans on a weekly basis um, coming to the ground. We got, you know, we're not a noisy, you know, we're not as vocal as Ipswich and Pompey online. So I think sometimes we're kind of victim for that in terms of previews. I think just the caveat I'd say to Shrewsbury is that we had Sam Rickis as a manager last year, and I don't want to go on a big rant about him, but he, he wasn't a very good football manager to be honest. Um, pre-season, he tried to play four-three-three. It clearly didn't work. Um, we weren't created any chances at all. His in his record, we scored less than a goal a game, which is a horrendous record. So what Steve Cottrell did um, to keep us up, he, if you take his games alone, we finished 13th with someone else's squad in a COVID season um, where we played something like 19 games on a Tuesday night where normally you play eight or nine. Um, so obviously very limited training ground time. So the team were going to be fit. Um, we obviously are lacking players at the moment, but we've got a manager who is very tactically very astute. And I'm sure that's something we'll come on to when we talk about Ipswich, my, my view on Ipswich. We had a manager that never changed a game, a manager that was probably lower than the level that we were at in terms of learning his trade, and we didn't really progress. Now we've got a manager who will make changes, who will have a tactical plan for every game, um, and we will be able to make changes. So, you know, if, if you're dominating midfield, we'll change formation. But that never used to happen under Sam Ricketts. Um, so for me, I'm cautiously, cautiously optimistic. It's a mental season. There's like nine or ten next Premier League teams. You know, lots of fans, clubs like yourselves, like Ipswich, who have twenty thousand fans, and clearly, you know, you have a bigger budget than us. But the great thing is, obviously, you can't put more than eleven players on a pitch. Um, and as you've already alluded to, League One is going to be an absolute nightmare. And if you're a, a Pompey fan or a Sunderland fan or an Ipswich fan who expects you're going to go on a, you know, get ninety points this season, I think you might need to. Um, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to every week. I think there's going to be a reason to look at the results because someone is going to get a beat in, in the week. Either it's going to be, I think it's just going to be absolutely crazy. The team will go on a run and there'll definitely be someone who we don't expect to be in the relegation zone in the relegation zone. And there'll probably be someone who we don't expect to be in the playoffs. In the playoffs. Definitely. And I want to talk about when we when we face each other. Um, I think we're playing the Shrews on in October. I think they, they we travel, you guys travel to Portman Road and I think we then travel to, to Shropshire later in the, in the season. I think maybe the, the final four games of the season. Um, I want to quickly bring up, of course, it was a robbery um, when we played um, Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury. Um, last time when they hit went Portman Road 2-1, we scored in the last minute. I felt so bad. I felt this is just a robbery. I don't know Do how you know we didn't deserve it. Do you know what? That was a really funny game because we'd almost got bored of saying the same, the same shit. Literally, I started an article on our, on our Google Drive um, Last, not February just gone, the February four of the reasons why we should sack the manager. And he stayed for another nearly nine months after that. And we got so bored of doing the podcast and saying the same things. We actually did a live pod for that game. So we watched it live. 
And with 15 minutes to go, I said, we're going to lose this game 2-1. And we did. Because I am, and also I hear on the grapevines, a player that plays in central defence for Ipswich, who used to play for Shrewsbury, said that we were absolutely fucked after 55 minutes. And that was the story of every game. So what you guys saw was basically the story of every game. We start well, the other team kind of get this, get an of what we're doing, and then our, our fitness just dies, and they you, just, you won. And for honest, it was it was in that kind of phase where you expect to lose, and you never want your own team to lose. But I personally was getting to the point where maybe a few defeats might make the pain kind of, you know, if that makes sense, you know, poor make make that decision quicker. But yeah, it was it was a funny game, and I don't yeah, you guys were very poor. I think he made one pass into the box, which I saw was a very common common um, frustration for Ipswich fans. Um, but yeah, last season, I'm sure both of us want to forget last season. Yeah, that's that's just completely forgotten about it. Never happened. <laughs> you know, it was COVID. It was a COVID season. The fans weren't in. Didn't happen. Um, of course, you know, I want to quickly talk about our transfer business in a, in a second. But I want to talk about when we face each other. You know, I'm sure they're going to be two very different games. I think you know the last game we played was a goalless draw. Um, and you know, it's one of those things at the end of the season, nothing to play for, just one of those games, get it done. What what can you expect from or what can town fans expect from a Steve Cottrell side? And um, what, what players should we fear when we face you? Yeah, I think it's likely we'll end up playing 3 4 1 2 um, during the season. Um, we have signed good wing backs. Um, we think we had something like 12 players play right back or right wing back last season. So we were very unsettled. It was just a car crash of a squad. Um, you will face, I would hope, one of the fittest sides in the division and one of the most organised teams in the division. Last season, we beat um, Hull away 1-0, Lincoln away 1-0. We beat Sunderland. We beat Portsmouth. Um, I, said, no, I, did it. I told you, I didn't I? I always get Portsmouth and people the wrong way around. We beat Peterborough 2-1 at home. Where we're going to be a really, really well-organised side. That is really, really tough to break down. Um, and hopefully we'll have enough quality to score goals at the end of the pitch. And that's the area that we're really lacking right now. We don't have a number 10. We're listen we're probably lacking another striker, another wing back. Um, we're certainly lacking attacking players. So can't really talk too much about attacking players right now. Um, but hopefully Bowman would have scored by the time we play you guys. Um, and hopefully we can keep on better. Um, he's someone to keep an eye out. He'll be playing left wing back um, if we get managed to keep him and before the window closes. And of course, a big talking point in League One is Towns' business. You know, we've got new owners, Paul Cook's first full season in charge. We made 10 really good signings. Um, I know fans are very excited about them. Um, as an outsider's point of view, what, what, what do you think of Towns' business? And is it going to be our year to finally get out of League One? You know, the last two years we've been, we've had a great start. You know, the, the, the chart of HMS Pistol League, 100 points, 100 goals. And then it happens, it all falls apart, and we're in our third year in League One. And yeah, as I said, as an outsider's point of view, what's your thoughts on everything? Um, for me, and Switch are most definitely the, the, the team with the highest chance of winning the title by, by far. Um, I think there's questions around Wigan, their manager. Um, it's a huge change that they're going to have in their squad. You guys are having a big change, but you've got a manager who's been there and done it. Um, when we finished third in League One, um, we were the surprise team that year. You know, it was really funny every week. I remember standing outside. Um, outside Portsmouth ground and I literally was live tweeting everything they were saying because they were furious who are Shrewsbury their crap blah 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 well we finished third that season and we got into 80 points um, and that season it was Wigan with your manager um, and um, and and I can't think of the other team who went up Wig Wigan and Don't oh God, Bolton was, must be yeah Bolton Wanderers went up um, and they absolutely spent loads of money to get up. Um, it got, yeah, both sides spent absolutely loads and loads of money. Um, I think you spent maybe like four times, five times as much they spent on wages versus us. Um, so, yeah, I, I really do think it's which for me, the I, I, by far the biggest favourites for this league. Um, Wes Byrne has always been a massive thorn in our side. Um, he's always been a really, really good player for for for, for Fleetwood. Then you look at Piggott, obviously just been one of the best strikers in the league, really consistent player. Um, Scott Frazier is a really good player as well. Harper's got sounds like a really good player as well. Uh, Edmondson is a good player. Chaplin's another good player as well. So then for me, you look at the signings and you're thinking, well, he can play there, he can play there. And for me, this seems to be a real clear strategy. 
I imagine you'll play 4-2-3-1 or kind of 4-3-3, um, but you've got players that are adaptable, players that are winners, and you've got a manager who knows exactly what is required to win games. You know, I'm a bit tired of people going on about NK Dons. Oh, they pay great passing football and all this kind of nonsense. They finish in the bottom half. They lost 18 games, and we we beat them. We were beating we were beating them three 0 after 20 minutes because they tried to pass the ball out the back, and we absolutely annihilated them. You're not going to get that with Ipswich. Yeah, you might want to try and play ball out the back, but if you're playing against a team that's really good at pressing, you're not going to do that. And that's one thing I really like about your manager is he likes to play good football, but he's not a fool. He's not a mug. And if you need to go to Sunderland and you know defend and play counter attacking football for 90 minutes, you'll do that. If you can go to somewhere and dominate the ball, and you know, and just you know, play really attractive, that tactic overlapping fullbacks, I'm sure you'll do that as well. And for me, that's the. If I was an Ipswich fan, I'd be absolutely looking forward to the season. You've got a manager who's going to try and score goals. You've got strikers that can score goals, but you've also got that manager who's got that tactical nous who can change things um, and yeah, put a game plan together. Um, for me, yeah, it's all about winning games, and I, I imagine you're going to win a lot of games this season. And of course, it's going to be an exciting season because fans are back in the stadium and I've never actually been um, to, to your guys' stadium before. So I cannot wait to have my first trip down there. Um, what can I expect and what can fans expect for the first time if they've never been? Um, and anywhere we should stop off before we go to the game? Yeah, I, it's not a great away day, I'm afraid. Um, it's not like you guys. Like, I remember going to it, switch, got on the, came off the train, went straight to the away pub walked down the road to, to Portman Road and it was obviously a good it wasn't not such a good away day in terms of the result but it was a good away day in terms of kind of the setup Shrewsbury's ground so Shrewsbury's old ground was right in the center of town next to loads and loads of amazing pubs now we are um, kind of outside of town a little bit it's a bit harder to get to um, it's a bit of a nightmare to be honest there is a fan zone where you can drink at the ground which is good so that's in, in, that's a change of the last few years um, but yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a good day out of Shrewsbury, I'd recommend going to into town, get the train to town, drink there, go to all the pubs. There's loads of good pubs in Shrewsbury, um, and then either get a taxi or make your way up to the ground. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'd love to say it's an amazing away day. If we were doing this podcast maybe 20 years ago, yeah, the Gay Meadow in the centre of town was yeah classic kind of away 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 day. But yeah, it's not amazing for away fans, I'm afraid. And hopefully this season the game won't get cancelled. Um, yeah, there's a lot of kickoff, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of theories from Shrewsbury Town fans that um, actually your manager wanted the game off. Yeah, I don't probably. know whether you heard anything. We were really keen to get the game on. Um, we were really keen to kind of play, but yeah, there was a everyone was blaming your manager for that. I think we were as well. At the time, Paul Lambert was very much, we wanted him out and uh, eventually <laughs> did go. But um, but yeah, hopefully that doesn't happen. But um, Ollie, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining me. Anything no else problem. you'd like to add before we wrap up? No, just, yeah. I just I guess if I was an Ipswich fan, I would just say enjoy the ride. It's a really, really long season. Um, and obviously, you'll, obviously, I think the January transfer window is going to be huge this season. So I think, you know, as long as you're in the fight, in the top five or something like that, and have been touching distance of winning the league, um, you know, a couple of extra signings in January, and then you can maybe piss the league and win it at the end. But yeah, just enjoy the game. It's You're going to lose to some team that you've probably never heard of. You're going to draw against some team that is going to kick the lumps out of you. Um, but yeah, you'll win more games than you lose. And I'm sure you'll have a good season. That's the great word is enjoy the ride. And I'm sure everyone will, um, fans from every club in League One. It's just going to be great to be back in the grounds. Um, it's been a pleasure, Ollie. Um, thank everybody for watching another edition of the League One Lowdown. Uh, we've got one more to go. And then that is it. The ride is done for League One Lowdown this year. Um, but anyways, I'll see you in that video. So bye-bye for now.